dental occlusion made easy. My name is Stacy Norell and I'm going to take you through the process of identifying normal occlusion as well as class 1, 2, 3 malocclusions. At the end of the video we will also talk about other malalignments that are commonly seen in patients. First let's start off and discuss what exactly do we mean by occlusion. So occlusion is simply defined as the contact relationship between all teeth where the maxillary and mandibular teeth come together when the patient is in a closed position. So what is normal? Before we can identify malocclusions, it's important to recognize what is considered perfectly normal occlusion. If you look at this image, you can see that the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar is occluding directly to the buccal cusp of the mandibular first molar. The maxillary canine is occluding between the distal half of the mandibular canine and the mesial half of the mandibular first premolar. If a patient has no other malalignments on the anterior teeth, everything is perfectly straight, no overjet, overbite, no rotations, this is considered normal. Now let's look at this written out. The mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar, so visualize number 3 or 14, occludes with the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. So as we look back at the image, you can see that number 14 here is occluding to the buccal groove of number 19. For the canine relationship, the maxillary canine occludes with the distal half of the mandibular canine and the mesial half of the mandibular first premolar. Class 1 malocclusion. So in class one malocclusion, we're looking at the exact same canine and molar relationship as we saw with normal occlusion. The only difference with class one is that there's some other malalignment in the anterior teeth, whether it be overjet, overbite, something's mesially or distally rotated, uh, crossbite, anything that makes it not in complete straight normal occlusion will cause the patient to be classified as a class one malocclusion. Class II malocclusion is the most complicated of the three. So I'm going to read this to you and then we're going to look at some images so we can get a good visual of exactly what we're talking about. So the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar, so again visualize number 3 or 14, is occluding by more than the width of a premolar, mesial, so in front of, the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. The distal surface of the mandibular canine is distal to the mesial surface of the maxillary canine, again by at least the width of a premolar. And then class one, class two, sorry, malocclusions can be divided into division one or two. So let's look at this image. You can see that the mesial buccal cusp here of number 14 is mesial, it's in front of the buccal groove of number 19 by the width of a premolar. If it's just a little bit over and not the full width of the premolar, then we would say they are a class one with a tendency towards a two. Okay, so it has to be by at least the width of a premolar, uh, which is a bit subjective, but it's all just an approximation. And then if you'll look at the canine, the distal surface of the mandibular canine is distal to the mesial surface of the maxillary canine. And again, that's going to be by at least the width of a premolar. Class three malocclusion is when the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar is distal to the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar by at least the width of a premolar. Then if you'll look at the canine, the maxillary canine is distal to the distal half of the mandibular canine by at least the width of a premolar. So your class three malocclusions will always have an underbite like this. So you can see here on the right side of this patient that mesial buccal cusp of number three is distal to the buccal groove of number 30. And this patient has a, an anterior cross spot in which the mandibular teeth are labial to the anterior teeth. Now let's look at the three all lined up together. Class one, let's look strictly at the molar classification right now. So class one, you can see the mesial buccal cusp is directly above, includes directly to the mandibular first molar. Class two, 
the mesial buccal cusp is mesial to the buccal groove. In class three, the mesial buccal cusp is distal to the groove. Again, when we're looking at class two and class three, the distance from the cusp from that buccal groove has to be at least the width of a premolar. Look also at the bite on these classifications. One, we have a normal bite with anterior teeth. Class two, you're gonna have an overjet, which we're gonna look at more closely. And class three, you've got an underbite. Okay, so I have made an occl occlusion decision tree when you're trying to figure out what occlusion your patient has. Ask yourself these questions. Does the mesial buccal cusp of 3 or 14 occlude with the buccal groove of 30 or 19? If your answer is yes, then you need to then go to the anterior teeth. Are there any malalignments on the anterior teeth? If your answer is no, then the patient has normal occlusion. If your answer is yes, but all of the above is true, then your patient has class one malocclusion. Now let's look at class two and three malocclusion. Does, you're still gonna ask yourself the same question. Does the mesial buccal cusp of three or 14 occlude with a buccal groove of three or 30? Well, if your answer is no, then this patient is not class one malocclusion. So now you need to ask yourself, is the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar mesial two or distal to the buccal groove by more than the width of a premolar? If the answer is that the mesial buccal cusp is mesial to the buccal groove, then you have class two malocclusion. Now you need to ask yourself, do the maxillary anteriors protrude facially? And if they do, you have class two division one. Let's take a look and see what that looks like. So you can see on this patient that the incisors are protruding facially. This patient has a pretty severe overjet. That is gonna make this patient a class two division one. If the maxillary interiors are retruded, we can have a class two division two. What's textbook with the division two is that the incisors are retruded and the canines are typically more labial. So they are um, more towards the lips. So this would be a class two division two. So with class two, you're looking for the mesial buccal cusp being mesial to the buccal groove of the mandibular first molar. Once you establish the patient is a class two, then you just need to look at the anteriors and to see if they tilt out or in, and that decides whether the patient is a division one or division two. If the mesial buccal cusp of the maxillary first molar is distal to the buccal groove by more than the width of a premolar, you now have class three malocclusion. That gives the typical bulldog look where the mandibular teeth are more labial than the anterior teeth. This is a class three malocclusion. Other considerations that we're gonna look at will be the overjet, which is the horizontal projection of the maxillary teeth beyond the mandibular teeth. Here you see a maxillary overjet. An overbite is where the maxillary interiors overlap mandibular interiors vertically. So remember an overjet is a horizontal projection and an overbite is vertical. You can measure both of these with your probe. This is an overbite. So in a normal occlusion, the maxillary anteriors do overlap just the incisal third of the mandibular molars, but in a moderate overbite, you would have the maxillary incisors going to the middle third of the mandibular, and for a severe overbite, the maxillary anteriors would come all the way down vertically to the lower third of the mandibular anteriors. Patients may also have an end-to-end -end bite where the maxillary and mandibular anteriors meet end-to-end. -end. Now, when you're retracting your patient's cheek and having them close down so you can look at their occlusion, make sure they're actually biting on your their back teeth because sometimes patients will 
think you're trying to see all their front teeth and will do this intentionally. So you do want to make sure that they're actually occluding on their back teeth in their normal relaxed closed jaw position. Some other malalignments to take into consideration are patients with an open bite in which there's no vertical overlap or contact between the maxillary mandibular incisors. This is common with a tongue thruster or a thumb sucker. A cross bite you will see often, which is lateral malalignment of the arches. So the maxillary teeth are positioned lingual to the mandibular teeth. You can see in this image that this patient has a posterior cross bite. Patients may have this only on one side or they may have a bilateral cross bite. And then think back to the images we've already looked at, which malocclusion classification will the patient always have an anterior cross bite? That's right, class three malocclusion. A patient with class three malocclusion will always have a cross bite in the anterior because the mandibular anteriors are going to be more labially positioned than the maxillary. I hope you found this video helpful and very straightforward. Don't forget to like this video, leave us a comment, and make sure you subscribe to Dental Hygiene with Richardson and Norrell so you don't miss any future videos.